When I boot my PC, it's only a black screen. This happened after not using it for about two weeks. I've tried quite a few troubleshooting techniques, but it didn't help, and I don't have parts to swap to see what the problem is. This is that viewer's broken gaming PC, and uh, we're gonna try to fix it in this video. So the specs of this rig include a Ryzen 5 3600, a B550M Steel Legend motherboard, and 32 gigs of DDR4. The graphics card is a GTX 1070 Ti from EVGA. I've actually used this exact card before many times. If you can find them for under $100 today used, I think they're still decent values for 720p and 1080p gaming. The power supply is a 700 watt 80 plus gold unit from Rosewill, and the case is from BitPhoenix. Honestly, for the expected budget, not a bad combination of of hardware, I'm just a bit worried about what could be causing the no display out. Hopefully it's nothing too major or complicated when we get this viewer back up and running with a working rig by the end of this video. Are you ready? Stay with me. The Antec Performance One FT is a resourceful take on a modern full tower PC case with plenty of cable management headroom, ample hardware support, and extra goodies like an integrated temperature display. And now it also comes in white. Building in the Performance One FT is a breeze, plenty of room in this color matching airy interior. And on the topic of cooling, a perforated and accented front panel pairs nicely with four, that's right, four color matching Antec Storm T3 fans, each 30 mils thick with PWM support. The Performance One FT is ready for your next PC build and the latest generation of hardware, and it can be now purchased in either black or white. Click the link below to learn more. Hey there, and welcome to Fix or Flop. If you're new, just know that everything you see us do is free of charge to the owners in question. We don't charge for labor, we don't charge for replacement parts, none of that. And in exchange, uh, they allow us to film videos like these that are hopefully educational and maybe even somewhat entertaining, especially if I completely miss things. I've done that before. I'm sure I'll do it again. I've learned so much over the years performing these services in the Orlando, Florida area. And if you have a broken system you'd like us to take a look at, again, it's not going to cost you a dime. You can submit a form linked in the video description. With this one, a few, a few ideas are crossing my mind. If we're not getting a picture out, but it is turning on and it was working, but only two weeks prior to it not, Maybe the graphics card is kicked to the can. That's definitely something I'm gonna hone in on because it's an older unit for sure. I don't think we're looking at a BIOS incompatibility. That wasn't mentioned to me at all, but it is something we should at least check off the list. We could also try something as simple as clearing the CMOS, although it's possible the owner might have already done that. One thing's for sure, we need a starting point. We need to be on the same page with the owner, so we need to power this on and attempt to replicate the issue described. Again, in this case, it'd be no picture out. The fans should spin, things should light up, we just won't get anything on our screen. We've got everything connected, ready for power on at the rear, power strip is on, power up front. Now we are getting LEDs before we even turn things on. That's actually a good sign. Here we go. Really digging the color scheme that the uh, owner has preset here. I suppose while we're waiting for this, I should mention, there have been maybe half a dozen or so potential videos that have just completely dissolved in thin air because the systems actually worked in the office and for some reason they were having trouble at their own houses. Maybe they you know, weren't connecting things properly or their outlet was bad, who knows? Um, it's a good result. It means there's nothing catastrophic going on with your system, but it really doesn't make for an entertaining video and so I don't end up uploading those. In this case, uh, we have nothing. There's no signal coming out, which is to be expected. And of course, we're connected to the discrete card and not to the motherboard, since in this 3600 case, there is no integrated graphics. The very first thing I'm gonna try is clearing the CMOS. There's a dedicated button at the back of this board. We're gonna hold it down for about 10 to 20 seconds. And the reason I'm starting here is because, well, it doesn't take very long to do. This is essentially cutting power from the battery to the BIOS chip, which should reset all of our settings. We have several cases in this fixer fault playlist alone where clearing the CMOS fixed are no display issues. I doubt that's what's going on here, but it is worth a shot because again, it's so easy to do. As a backup step, we can also remove this CMOS battery here for about one to two minutes. This is gonna essentially do the same thing. We're just bypassing the button. In the event there's a button failure, this is the surefire way to reset your CMOS. But unfortunately, still no display out. I also noticed there's a set of debug LEDs at the bottom of this board. The two eliminated now are for CPU and DRAM, usually the first two checks in a post process. Uh, but you'll notice occasionally these lights flicker over to the boot light. Nice. That's the far left one there. And then sometimes the VGA light will pop up. I, the blinking is very odd. So there's VGA again. And then there's the boot light. It's, it's kind of just a, a random sequence here. Usually it's one after another after another. 
And in this case, they all turn off after a while, but still no signal. Also just notice his DDR4 is in the wrong two starting slots. Usually it's supposed to be slots two and four going from left to right for dual channel with only two dims. This normally wouldn't prevent the system from posting, but I'm gonna change it anyway since we're having issues. But in this case, you can see no debug lights are illuminated after a few seconds of being powered on. Still no posts though. Um, I'm gonna start honing in on the graphics card and I'm also gonna check connections at the rear. Maybe the card isn't being powered properly. This is a semi-modular unit, so it's always worth a look, but uh, yeah, PCIe cable is correctly inserted. Same goes for SATA power, so uh, nothing at least initially that I see wrong with the power supply. Even decided to leave it running for a few minutes just in case it was just a slow boot process, but still nothing. So it's time to whip out our trusty XFX graphics card. This we know works, it doesn't require supplemental power and it should tell us right away whether or not the graphics card in the system, the 1070 Ti, works or not. Also, oof, these are not the correct screws to be using back here. Out she comes, we'll do a quick visual inspection. A bit dirty, yes, but from what we can see, nothing uh, super alarming, nothing blown, nothing burned. So far, so good. In goes this tiny little thing. If I can wiggle it in. There we go. And would you look at that. Boots up right away. First try without issues straight into Windows. Obviously, we don't have the correct drivers for this card installed, but we're already much further than we were before. It's possible that GTX 1070 Ti is on its way out, but we can't jump too far ahead. Remember, this could still be a power delivery issue. If the card in question is not getting correct supplemental power, then it would also exhibit the symptoms we were seeing. So we need to check this PSU first. Our inline Passmark PSU tester should tell us right away if we've any faults. So we're gonna power on manually here. And so far, everything looks good. We're not putting any load under the unit, of course, but don't see any immediate issues with timings or slew rate or voltages. It all looks fine. And so we'll move on to the graphics card. By process of elimination, we've shown that everything else in the system works. We can load into Windows no problem, with the only change being the card. And we've tested the power supply to make sure that it's not a power delivery issue. We've got the replacement card in the same slot in the motherboard. I don't expect it's a PCIe issue. This is a PCI Gen 3 card, uh, and I think the chip only supports Gen 3 as well. It's a 3600. If I recall correctly, those are still only Gen 3. So if, then none of that would conflict with this kind of card here. In my experience, I think the only other option we have is to disassemble this and see if there's anything noticeable that we can fix. We should also repaste uh, and uh, you know do a bit of cleaning while we're in there, might as well but I doubt at this point we're gonna be able to get this card to work anymore. We'll start by removing these Phillips screws top side. Now notice that uh, this one here actually has its warranty sticker still applied. It hasn't been punctured yet, which tells me this card hasn't been disassembled and more importantly, hasn't been repasted since it was new. And this is a Pascal card, so what, 2016-ish? We're almost a decade old at this point. And while I know it sounds crazy, there goes the sticker. I have seen cards completely breathe new life once they've been repasted. It's just uh, it's just how things work sometimes. We've got two sets of cables to worry about, one for the LEDs and one for the fans. So we get those removed and then we've got this uh, sort of like mid plate here that covers the PCB. We'll get this off and then we can look at repasting. We'll also do a more thorough physical inspection uh, now that we can see the other side of this board. Easy now, this cover is pretty gross. And uh, yeah, all the goodies, you can see our VRAM, obviously the GPU there, MOSFET, VRMs, everything looks okay, which tends to be how it works around here. In a lot of these cases, you have underlying power delivery issues. I'd wager something in this area here, maybe a dead short around the MOSFET area. Uh, and then also a partially deballed a memory chip that could be to blame or a partially deballed GPU. Sometimes when these boards get super hot, they flex and expand and contract. And uh, yeah, that can partially deball one of these chips. So uh, you always gotta be careful with that, especially with these larger cards nowadays. A lot of them like to flex and bend heavily when installed in builds. Yeah, just keep a lookout. I'm gonna douse this entire card Card in excess IPA. It's not normally what I do, but uh, we're just gonna flood everything. We're gonna dry it all up with some shop towels and Q-tips. We'll especially focus on the GPU area here, make sure we get all this thermal paste up. It's not super chalky, I noticed that when I removed the cooler, so that's good. It means the paste wasn't trash, whatever EVGA I used, but uh, we'll be sure to yeah, focus on a little bit of everything with this board. We'll give it a best shot, and you know, if it doesn't work, we'll have to replace it. Eight hours later. Well, here she is, much cleaner now. This certainly isn't like PCVC worthy, but I didn't want to spend an unreasonable amount of time on a car that 
that we might not even get to work at the end of the day. So uh, it's clean enough. It's definitely a step in the right direction. We're gonna repaste this, reassemble it, and then throw it back in the rig. We'll just jump straight to that. Easy does it then. Make sure that we also remember to connect supplemental power, just a single eight pin. This then is for all the marbles. The only other thing we can do, and I'll probably just do this off camera, is quickly check that the cart also doesn't work in a separate rig. Again, I doubt there's an incompatibility here between the platform and the card, but uh, we've done about all we can do hardware wise. Again, apart from maybe probing around, this card isn't that expensive. I'd rather just replace it at this point anyway. Take it as a sign to upgrade if possible. If you can't afford an upgrade, uh, there are still plenty of 1070s, RX 480s, and you know, cards of that caliber for under $100. Uh, wondering if we're gonna get something here. Debug lights have been off for a few minutes now. I've been super patient just waiting for something to happen. No reaction on screen whatsoever. The only other thing I can think of, apart from maybe, again, trying the card in a separate rig just to cover all of our bases, it's possible you might have a bad HDMI port. I use the stock HDMI cable that comes with this portable monitor, which is linked below, by the way, along with some of my other troubleshooting gear. Uh, but it's possible the card has a bad HDMI port. Not common, but it has happened. So it's worth swapping to DisplayPort just to, again, rule it out. It's really strange because we get LEDs here at the front. That means the card is getting some power. Also, you can see the fans occasionally spool up and then stop. I am not sure if that's because the card just isn't warming up very much because it's more or less idling or if there's some other board issue. But uh, it, it, yeah, just all around strange circumstances. What do you know? DisplayPort was not the issue. Also tested the 1070 Ti in a separate makeshift AMD rig and still no signal to a monitor. So we really have no choice folks. We had to replace the graphics card. Uh, it's been a while since we've had to do that. I'm, I'm grateful that we haven't had too many of those, but uh, I've got a pretty decent card. It's actually gonna be a nice upgrade form as well that I purchased, used myself, uh, that uh, I, I think is gonna work no problem. And he should have enough wattage from his power supply to drive it without issue. The last thing I want to do is check the BIOS. I wasn't initially able to do that with the 1070 Ti in there because, again, that's what I believe is the fault. But I, I, still, sometimes BIOSes can be a bit finicky with certain hardware, and I, I just want to, again, make sure that I've done pretty much everything I can do before sending this owner back with a system that could exhibit the same issues if it is BIOS related. I, I don't know for sure. The BIOS update thing has always been finicky, especially with AMD. You could get things to completely brick between BIOS updates with AMD boards. So it's kind of like a blessing and a curse. Like AM4 is super versatile. It supports so many different CPUs, but at the same time, you do run into occasionally those compatibility problems, uh, hardware issues, uh, detecting multiple storage drives, all of that I have fixed in the past, maybe not in fix or flop, but I have personally fixed uh, just by updating the BIOS. So we're gonna check this board's revision after we swap in the new card. Speaking of, let's go ahead and pull it down from the closet. This here is a Radeon RX 5600 XT. More new, more modern, more everything. In fact, from the 3 Mark Time Spy database, you can see just how much more powerful the 5600 XT is than the 1070 Ti. Just a single synthetic, but again, gives you an idea of what we're working with upgrade wise here. So we're gonna go ahead and get this card installed. We'll power on. I Again, I expect things will work since we've pretty much ruled out every other component except the graphics card. And then we'll check that BIOS as just one final precaution. Out with the old and in with the, well, newer. <laughs> it's not brand new, but uh, it's not as old as before. So I'll slide it in like so. It fits almost perfectly in this case, almost the same footprint as the older card. We'll get it connected and uh, we'll power on. It's getting a bit messy, but uh, we just need to make sure that Everything is healthy. I've got the key. I don't know why I put the keyboard way over there. Let's slide that this way just a bit. I want to tab into the BIOS as soon as possible. So again, we can check that BIOS revision and get that out of the way. Of course, this assuming the swapped card actually works. It should. I've used it in another rig. I know it works, but uh, works with this system. There we go. So that's a post right away and straight into the BIOS. Actually, that's convenient. You can see the BIOS revision we're on is P1.20. And according to this product page, whoa, way down here, P120 was released uh, back in 2020. So yeah, we, we, we need to upgrade this. We've got the ROM loaded onto this thumb drive. We're going to swing on over to Instant Flash. And yep, that's 
That's what we want. We'll click yes. Make sure we don't power off during this process. Don't touch anything and don't do this during a lightning storm. Ask me how I know. A few minutes later and we've loaded straight back into Windows with the BIOS updated. So we should have more stability in the long run, especially like memory stability and things that uh, you get with more recent BIOS updates on AMD side. Uh, so the solution here stands and I expect this will be what we end up going with, but I still wanna try this graphics card one last time, one final hoorah. I doubt it's gonna work, but I feel like I owe it to myself and to all of you to at least check. If this does work, I'm sure I'll have some accusations, like I planted some things or knew this was gonna happen, but uh, definitely not. I, I, I don't think anything's gonna pop up here. I don't wanna focus on the screen because it'll kinda, actually it's not, it doesn't have a problem. Well, now it does, there it goes. Yeah, so I'll focus just below the screen and we'll see if we get any sign of life. Uh, it doesn't look like it, let's see what we've got going on debug wise. So VGA and boot LEDs are lit right now. It's uh, okay, now they're both gone. Should be seeing something on screen right about now, but uh, doesn't look like doesn't look like that's gonna happen. Uh, shot in the dark, yes, but now we know for certain that uh, it's card related and not motherboard or BIOS or power supply related. I hate to use the word certain because in science there are very few certainties, but uh, I feel like we've exhausted every feasible option here. We could start probing SMDs on the board, trying to find dead shorts or partial deballings. And yes, we could blast the card with a lot of heat and just cross our fingers, but this isn't my rig thing. And this is a viewer's rig and I wanna treat it with respect. I don't wanna just send them back on their way with a card that might only work for a few extra days before it kicks the can again. And the, you know, heat treatments, so you toss it in an oven, etc. Those tend to be temporary solutions. I wanna make sure that, uh, well, they're equipped with a card that is presumably gonna last several years. So that is why I am avoiding the heat treat method. Um, yeah, just wanted to throw that out. I'm sure some of you are thinking, why are you not doing that? That's why. It's not my card, it's not my system. I wanna make sure that it runs for a good while. Corsair HS80 Max wireless series headsets boast premium low latency sound with optional Bluetooth support, clear omnidirectional microphone, and immersive Dolby Atmos baked in. Enjoy plush ear pads, breathable cloth, and generally excellent build quality. I've been using Corsair HS headsets for several years, and I think you'll be as impressed as I was when you try one for the first time. Learn more about the HS80 Max wireless by clicking the link below. That just about wraps this one up then. With the new card inserted, I have reset the system multiple times and it loads into Windows every single time without fail. So definitely a warranted swap. Just a bit of a shame that the uh, old GTX 1070 Ti here, trusty Pascal, has finally kicked the can. Now it is possible this can still be repaired. I'm gonna hold on to it. I've got a few other cards from previous episodes that I plan to send in all at once to uh, ideally another channel on YouTube that you guys like watching that specializes in board repair. I've dabbled in board repair in the past, but uh, it's not my strong suit. I don't claim for it to be. And in engineering school, that was one of my toughest subjects, if I'm being honest. Uh, ele electrical circuits, uh, I forget the name of the course. I think it was electrical circuits. It was fine up through DC, but then we get to AC current and stuff just just like this. Like I, I knew quickly that uh, it was not going to be something I enjoyed long-term. And so that's why I just haven't really focused on it. I haven't really tried learning more. And then most of this is, I mean, well, all of this is DC current, uh, but it just kind of put me off to the whole electrical engineering side of things. My dad's an electrical engineer. I don't know how many of you know that. Um, he, he knows this stuff, but I, I don't, I just, it's not my thing. So I'd rather defer to the specialists, to the pros who know what they're doing. Maybe we can get this thing saved after all. It just won't happen here. If you guys enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you have not already. Again, check out relevant uh, details in the video description, including where to submit a form if you happen to be an Orlando local and you have a broken system. Remember, free of charge. We're not gonna ask for any money at all. In fact, I've had people try to give me money before and I outright refuse it. It's just something that I wanna stand by in this playlist. Uh, I, I don't want to be compensated at all from the individuals who are already gracious enough to drive out to meet us uh, two times, by the way, once to drop the system off and once to pick it back up again. And there's no guarantee of a fix at that. So they're putting a lot of faith in me in the process and I greatly appreciate it. You'll also find some troubleshooting gear down there, stuff that you've seen us use occasionally. I'll also have some cleaning gear as well. We cleaned a bit of the graphics card up. So uh, if you wanna see the stuff that I use on a daily basis for these videos and for these diagnoses, it's all down there. Again, thanks so much for watching this far into this one. I will catch you in the next. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.